for the royal appointment. Oh wow, that, that royal got out of control. I have bad news, guys. The streak is over, but the lack of self-awareness is still there. Camilla was at a family reunion in Transylvania and finally unwrapped herself from the cave she was sleeping upside down in because she's a bat. And flew home to write about silly season. Silly season has well and truly arrived. I don't know, I like puppy season. Say hi to your fans. Admittedly, this is a good opener. With headlines like Chinese Zoo forced to deny bear is person in disguise, it's clear silly season is well and truly underway. I still can't decide if that is a bear or a human. Apparently, this is the season when newspapers often publish trivial material because of a lack of important news. What is different from the other 11 months of the year? These newsletters suggest that silly season never ends. 525,600 minutes of silly. The lack of self-reflection continues. Basically with the royal family off duty. It is hardly surprising that members of the monarchy can sometimes find themselves appearing in the media for somewhat spurious reasons at this time. <laughs> at this time? <laughs> this one might break me. She starts off with Kiltgate, which is the supposed furor over the Prince of Wales refusing to wear the Scottish skirt, which actually I am team the British royal family not cosplaying Scottish Highlanders. Anyway, Camilla says she's not sure if it classifies as front page news. And you know what, Camilla? I agree. But then it seems like we move into like the dear diary portion. Like someone was like, let it out, girl, put it in the mean book. Okay, here we go. She pivots from kilts to no one was stopping the press for the shock announcement that brace yourselves, Ahmed Scobie is no longer going to be writing a bi-monthly column for Yahoo News. Is this whole article a setup to talk about Ahmed Scobie, another reporter? This is a bizarre story for Camilla to focus on, but here we are. It's also not a story. He tweeted about it. They were up for renewal. He didn't renew. He has other projects going on. But he's still writing for Harper's Bazaar, so... What? Why did she include Omid Scobie in her newsletter? But it doesn't end there. The Finding Freedom author, who once followed journalists like me around royal tours begging to know how we got stories, has announced that he has quit the royal executive editor role to focus on other projects, including his forthcoming book, Endgame, which must seemingly always be written in capitals, if his Twitter feed is anything to go by. You're really going to get into capitalization. Do you think she actually believes this? Like, was Omid once on a tour and just happened to be walking behind her and maybe, like, asked directions to the loo, and she was like, oh, He's trying to get my scoop. He recognizes intrepid reporter Camilla Tomini's journalistic skills. Respectfully, no one who's serious about journalism is following any of these people. And the fact that Camilla can't see her part in the participation and the perpetuation of these silly stories that last way beyond the month of August is very telling. It's also incredibly telling how people like Camilla Tomini and others in the Royal Rota choose to focus all of their ire on one mixed race individual whose crime appears to be reporting and not following everyone else off the cliff for these Prince Harry, Meghan Markle stories, seeing the racism in the reporting when the majority white newsrooms did not. When they attack someone like Omid, it's a tell on them and they don't even realize it. But this is obviously a way to transition into Meghan Markle. She's talking about David Beckham and Victoria Beckham, just FYI. And she quotes the post, so we're off to a swimming start. According to the New York Post, the couple who attended the Sussexes' Windsor wedding in 2018 have been markled, ghosted, after Harry and Meghan allegedly began to suspect their A-list friends were leaking stories about them to the press. Then she goes into how Oprah is apparently distancing herself. She goes back to the claims that Taylor Swift turned out an opportunity to be on Megan's podcast. I can't believe we haven't brought up South Park. She ends with, It would probably be more newsworthy to report that the Sussexes had made new friends, not lost old ones. 
Notice how the term for ghosting is markled, just like it was Mexit. But the story is presumably about both Harry and Meghan. But besides that, it's so interesting watching her make fun of these silly stories when this kind of Markle story is exactly what she writes about. I don't think she proved that it's silly season. I think she proved the double standard in her reporting. Rings hollow her somewhat tongue-in-cheek mocking the New York Post, which she really can't even commit to. You wouldn't allow a sixth grader to submit a piece like this because there are so many contradicting arguments in it. Not to mention the central hypothesis that the news is serious except for August is bollocks. But finally, back to Camilla Tomini's sources that apparently everyone is dying to get. I just want to remind everyone of this moment. A very broad sense that wouldn't disclose your sources about the sort of terrain from which this story comes. Does it come from the palace? No, I'm not this? saying anything about where it came from. from LA, perhaps? Not telling you Did, anything about where okay. it came from. Did you take the story to the palace? Um, no. So sure of a story that she didn't even feel the need to bring it to the palace to check. It's gossip and PR masquerading as journalism. And I guess I can agree with Camilla on this point. The media right now is certainly in its silly season.